The word that was in the beginning, and that was with me, was then not only an ideal, but it was my ideal of myself in expression, in a new state or condition, which you call earth life. This ideal was I, myself, because it was part of me, being as yet latent and unmanifest within me, for it was of the substance and essence of my being, which is itself an ideal, the one original ideal. All things were made by me by the vitalized action of this, my ideal, being thought and spoken into expression. And nothing has been or ever can be expressed in earth life without having my, my ideal as the primary and fundamental cause and principle of its being. This, my ideal, therefore, is now in the process of unfoldment, or of being thought into outer expression. Some call it evolution, just as is the flower when the bud puts forth from the stalk and finally opens into the blossom, obeying the urge to express my ideal hidden within its soul. Just so will I develop and unfold all my mediums of expression, which shall finally, unitedly, and completely picture forth my ideal from out their souls in all the glory of its perfection. At present, these mediums are of such nature that they require many languages of many types, from the simplest to the most complex, composed of almost an infinite number of words to express my ideal. But when I shall have completely thought out my ideal, or shall have perfected my many mediums of expression, then shall my ideal shine forth in every word, each, in fact, being a perfect part or phase of my ideal, all so chosen and arranged that they will re really be as one word, radiating the sublime significance of my meaning. Then shall all languages have meld, melted, merged into one language, and all words into one word. For all mediums shall have become flesh, and all flesh shall have become one flesh, the now perfected medium for the complete expression of one word of my ideal, myself. Then shall myself now capable of being expressed by these perfected words, shine through its medium of expression, through the personalities, their bodies, minds, and intellects. And the word shall have become flesh, or shall be the flesh. This means that all words, through the regenerative power of my ideal within, shall have evolved through the flesh, transmuting and spiritualizing it and making it so perfected so perfectly and become fully manifest, thus amalgamating once more all words and all flesh into one word, the word, which was in the beginning, and which then will shine through all created flesh as a son of glory, the Christ of God. This is the plan and purpose of my creation, and of all manifested things. A glimpse of the process of my creation, or of my thinking, my ideal of myself into earth expression, will be given in what follows. My ideal. Next chapter. You have been told that the earth and all things belonging to it are but the outer manifestations of my ideal which is now in the process of being thought into perfect expression. You have been shown that my idea is responsible for all created things and that it is both the cause and the reason for all manifestations, yourself and your brothers and sisters included, all of which have been thought into existence by me, the one original thinker and creator. We will now trace the course of that ideal from the beginning through its various stages of earth expression, as well as the process of my thinking that ideal into its present state of manifestation. If you will note carefully all that follows, and will allow me within to direct all of your med meditations 
upon its inner meaning. You will be shown not only how to create by thinking anything whatsoever you choose to create, but how you came into being and into your present state of manifestation. In the beginning, at the dawn of a new cosmic day, when the world consciousness was just awakening, and the stillness of cosmic night yet prevailed, I, the thinker, conceived my ideal. This my ideal of myself in manifestation in a new condition called earth expression, I saw completely pictured in the mirror of my omnificent mind. In this mirror I saw the real earth shining forth brilliantly in the cosmos, a perfect sphere, where all the infinite phases, attributes, and powers of my divine nature were finding perfect expression through the medium of angels of light, living messengers of my will, my word in the flesh, even as it is in the celestial world of the eternal. I saw myself manifesting outwardly as nature, and my life as the vivifying and evolving principle back of all manifestation. I saw love, the divine creative power, as the animating and vitalizing force back of all life, and my desire to give perfect expression to that love as the potential and real cause and reason of the birth of my idea. All this I saw mirrored in my all-seeing and all-knowing mind which could see and reflect only the soul of things or their reality. Therefore, this that I saw pictured in my mind was the real earth, in fact, its beginning, its conception into cosmic being. Now, my consciousness is the inner essence of all space and all life. It is the real substance of my all-comprehending and all-including mind whose informing and vitalizing center is everywhere and its limits and circumference nowhere. Within the realm of my mind alone, I live and move and have my being. It both contains and fills all things, and its every vibration and manifestation is but the expression of some phase of my being. Being is expressing or outpressing. You cannot imagine being without expression. Therefore, I, all that is, am expressing constantly and continuously expressing. Expressing what? What else could I express if I am all that is but myself? You cannot yet see or comprehend me, myself, but you can comprehend when I inspire you with an ideal. Therefore, if I am all there is, that ideal, which is direct from me, must be part of or a phase of myself in being or expression. Any ideal once born within the realm of my mind, as has been shown, immediately becomes a reality. For in the eternality of my being, time is not. With you, however, an ideal first creates desire, a desire to express that idea, then desire compels thinking, thinking causes action, and action produces results. The ideal is actual outer manifestation. In reality, I have no desire, for I am all things, and all things are of me. I need only to think and speak the word to produce results. Yet, that desire you feel in you is from me because it is born in my ideal, which I implanted in your mind only that it might come forth into expression through you. Indeed, whatever you desire is I, knocking at the door of your mind, announcing my purpose of manifesting myself in you or through you in the particular form indicated by that desire. What is called desire in human personality is but the necessary action of my will pushing forth the expression of my ideal into outer manifestation or being.